it's interesting because increasingly we're, we're hearing more discussion about this stuff doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. And yet if we actually examine the leading organizations in this space, it does work. Mm -hmm. and, and part of what we've been looking at, I think, is the evidence behind, you know, what are the organizations that are those outlier organizations that have really bent the cost curve and actually changed their value proposition for their talent mm -hmm. in how they've done it. And maybe, Bruce, you might offer some observations. I mean, it goes beyond just leadership and culture and programs, but a certain level of discipline and orientation to, to execute in this space too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the, one of the evolving um, terms that we're hearing in the, in the marketplace now is this notion of psychologically safe workplaces where we're dealing with what is um, essentially a, an operationalized, a fully operationalized culture of health. Uh, and it extends beyond simply what are the benefits offerings and whether there is equity or equitable benefit design. Um, and extends much more to how middle managers treat their subordinates, how the C-suite views the, the success of the company, and a, a widespread recognition and acceptance, importantly, that um, the success of the company is dependent upon the health with a capital H of the workforce um, in its entirety. That's one of the shifts I, I've seen is away from trying to prove ROI on medical expenses, but look at overall productivity. Yeah. And that has been a, a, a very distinct shift. Yeah, and, and, and we did a survey, and what we found is the great majority of uh, employers today still are only looking at the medical costs. And when they're looking at the medical costs, they're, they're looking at the medical costs for those conditions. You know, one of the areas mm -hmm. that I think everybody's kind of alluded to is the, the role of mental health. Right in this context, and of course mental health and well-being go very much hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, why mental health, and is there, is there a payback on mental health? Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I know you've, you've yeah. said that's the, that, that's the number one issue we should be focusing on, but yes. I, I, I'd no. be interested in your take on that. Yeah, I, th I think it's an unrecognized uh, problem and, and probably the largest driver in what we're seeing in medical claims costs because issues with mental health, and it doesn't have to necessarily be a diagnosable mental health condition. It can be anything from emotional. So there's stressors going on at home, things like this, but they impact a, one's ability to be compliant. So especially a diabetic. Uh, a diabetic that is, has an underlying mental health condition will not be compliant with their diabetes until you get the mental health condition taken care of. So we see this in our data all the time. We even see unrecognized mental health issues. So vague diagnosis, abdominal pain, low back pain with frequent medical visits, their cost per, per employee with those conditions are more than somebody with a mental health condition and about six times those of an, of an employee that has none of those. Wow. And it, it really, Andy, to your point, speaks to the need for a more integrated um, and not to use the cliche, but patient-centric approach. We have so many new programs and so many new vendors entering the marketplace. Um, I heard recently or read recently that there are now over 5,100 apps for management of diabetes. And we have to think more uh, mindfully about sticking with this patient-centered truly patient-centered, holistic approach because that's where we're going to have the greatest value. Um, if those diabetes programs don't account for depression, we are not going to have the success, um, or those employers aren't going to have the success that they, that they want to have. And many times you, you have already an engaged patient that's going to use that app, so they were going to be good anyway. It's really the hard patients and how do you deal with this uh, that really needs to be measured and, and accounted for. Well, I would argue that most people who suffer with some kind of chronic condition have periods, episodes, and maybe throughout of depression. I just, I, I think managing a condition, diabetes, heart, 
anything, if it's if it's a layer over your life, it's it is most likely to create some level of depression. And back to role of primary care, those they have the perfect opportunity to really call out that kind of behavior in a patient if they had time. Related to that is this issue around uh, caregivers, right? Oh. Um, and Pat, you have a population of caregivers. That's, right. that's their job. I mean, how does that manifest uh, their role impact their personal well-being, their personal health? Um, have you seen that? Have you studied well, that? Well, in a, in a couple of ways, I think. We have a higher rate of utilization by probably 100% than most employers with our EAP program. And I think part of that is a willingness by these caregivers to call out their own need. They don't always take care of that need, but they're willing to call it out. And an EAP is a safer place to do that. So I think that explains some of the rate of utilization. But we worry a lot about the stress that they have in their lives of taking care of others and definitely think it has a role in the health. And that's in our employees too. Oh, it is. And and again, it's the it's the it's the social support. So the social aspect of health of who do you have supporting you at home, at work, things like this, because you know, and, and caregivers, caregivers have their own health problems. They have a higher mortality than a non-caregiver. So there, there are a lot of issues from that. So when you're dealing with a significant medical condition, having, and, and we've seen it, I don't know, we, I saw it when I was, uh, you know, in practice. Someone who had a large network of support did a lot better than somebody who was more isolated. Mm -hmm.